Well, thank you, Rob. That was a really uh, powerful message. Thanks for reminding me about what's going on there. Our next speaker uh, is uh, Natalia Pasternak-Kashner. She comes from all the way from Brazil to give a presentation to tell us uh, what, what is the current move towards science in Brazil. She is a researcher, a research fellow at the Institute of Biomedical Sciences at the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And she also has a passion for uh, promoting science through science communication and advocacy. So please welcome to the stage, Dr. public perception surveys in Brazil this year. We conducted three national surveys to assess what the public perceives about science, how they feel about science, if they think it's important, and why are we so suddenly interested in what Brazilians think about science. So for you to understand this, I have to give you some context. There are three things in Brazil that we're really proud of. First, we have the world's largest public health care system. We cater to 200 million people. And we are very proud of that. We are, our science research has always been public funded, so science for us has always been a national priority. And also, we have the world's best football team. <laughs> oh, we did. <laughs> until this happened. <laughs> but football was not our only setback. You see, our, our, our uh, public health care system that we're so proud of was invaded by 29 modalities of alternative medicine that range from the most popular ones like homeopathy and acupuncture to ones you have never heard of, such as circular dances and family constellations and aromatherapy and bee therapy. Well, that's 29 of them paid for with taxpayers' money. Our science, public funded science, is gone. Our science budget has been cut in half over the, the past couple of years. So assessing how the public feels about that might be a good idea. Because when you think that nothing, nothing could be more humiliating than this, well then, this happens. <laughs> Meet my president, people, Jair Bolsonaro, aka the Tropical Trump. <laughs> when, when he's not very busy insulting other people's wives, he actually runs the country with a great team that he put together. So you see, we have a Minister of Education who couldn't care less about education, so he cut the budget for our federal universities. Our Minister of Environment doesn't give a damn about the environment, so he doesn't do anything about the fires in the Amazon forest. The Minister of Human Rights and Women Issues, a woman herself, has actually said in a public address that women belong in the kitchen. And she's very worried about evolution in schools. She's worried that we are actually teaching it at our schools. And she's worried because she talked to Jesus frequently when she sees him on top of a guava tree. <laughs> so under this government, Oh, and I forgot to mention, we have a Minister of International Affairs who apparently hates the world and is a famous climate change denialist. So, uh, with a government that challenges climate change and evolution, it would be nice to know what the people think about science in Brazil, because really, we could use some help. So, the Center of Management and Strategic Studies uh, from the Ministry of Science and Technology in Brazil conducted a national survey about the public perception of science. Note the perception is not the same as understanding. So, when we talk about perception of science, we're actually talking about if people think it's important, if they like it, and not if they understand scientific concepts. And that's what they did. 
So the results were kind of encouraging because 85% of the respondents said that they actually trust scientists and they think that science is important. If we put the question in an inverted way, it gets even better because less than 1% of the respondents said that they distrust scientists. So we're looking good in that picture. And as for funding, 66% seem to support funding for science, public funding. So it seems that the results are good, but when you ask people if they know a Brazilian scientist, 90% of the respondents could name a single Brazilian scientist and they could name one single research institution. So they don't know who the scientists are and they don't know where we work and what we do. So when, you, when people say that less than 1% actually dis, they, they don't distrust scientists, it may just be because they don't know who the hell we are. <laughs> but even so, our, our scientific societies in Brazil have been using the good results to try to press the government for funding to get us our money back. And uh, they have been using these results to talk to the Minister of Science and Technology and try to get his help. And it shouldn't be too difficult to talk to our Minister of Science and Technology because you can see that he is really a guy that stands out. If you have any trouble, <laughs> don't blame the guy. He's actual last real job was 20 years ago as an astronaut, so maybe he just doesn't know how to dress up for work. <laughs> when we talk about science understanding, they did put two questions that are used as markers to assess how the public understands scientific consensus and concepts. It's not that we're really getting a, a full picture of how they understand science, but it gives us an idea of how they react to scientific consensus and scientific simple concepts. So uh, GMOs and antibiotics are used in international surveys all around the world to assess this kind of situation. In Brazil, things are not looking good. 74% of the respondents were really afraid of consuming GMOs and 78% didn't understand how an antibiotic works. They think that it's also good for viruses. So uh, this shows us that uh, Brazilians don't really grasp scientific consensus, for instance, that GMOs are safe, and they don't really understand basic scientific concepts. My institute, Question of Science in Brazil, try to assess scientific understanding of sci uh, science understanding in the population. And we asked questions about uh, global issues such as vaccines and global warming and alternative medicine. And these are the results that we got. So uh, vaccination seems to be an important thing in Brazil because 97% of the respondents agreed that vaccination is safe and it's important. We were very glad to hear that. 92% uh, agreed that the earth revolves around the sun, and the other 8% are probably all in government. 87% <laughs> of, of our population agrees that global warming is real and is man-made. So far, so good. But when we start to ask about alternative medicine, you see that 83% of the respondents think that alternative medicine is a good alternative to medicine. And they are also afraid of consuming GMOs, same as in the other study. They think that spiritual energy can heal you from disease. And more than half of the respondents either don't understand or don't accept the concept of evolution. And a great portion of that think that government hides information about aliens who have visited us in the past. So it's not looking that good for Brazilians. What it sums up is that we have a very confused population, especially when it comes to issues such as biotechnology, health and evolution. 
and yet another study show that Brazilians have a very passive attitude when consuming scientific information online. They don't really look for scientific information. Scientific information just stumbles upon them, just happens upon them. So they're looking for something else entirely different and then they just come upon scientific information that they might like or not. And knowing how algorithms work in social media, this is something, this is a cause of concern, because we know that people are more, more likely to stumble on anti-vaxxers and flat earth sites than sites that actually promote scientific reasoning and thinking. And as for scientists, if people don't know who the scientists are and where they work, could it be that when they trust scientists, they're talking about these guys? So, this is yours, Dr. Oz, you know him, and you can keep him, I don't want him. But this is all, if you don't know, you should, because he is the Brazilian scientist who discovered the cure of cancer, of all cancers. And this was a big thing in Brazil, because he was a professor at the university, at my university, the University of Sao Paulo, the largest university in Latin America. And he was a full professor of chemistry, and he started to manufacture inside the university with public money the cancer miracle pill, and he would distribute to the local population. I can say one good thing about Dr. Gilberto Querici, the guy who discovered the miracle cancer pill, and what I can say about him is that he is very good for your love life. Well, for my love life, at least. Because, you see, I'm a science communicator, my husband is a science journalist, and we first met when we were both undercover attending a seminar by Dr. Gilberto Kenichi. Aww. And he... Thank you. And he was speaking to several cancer patients and their families, and asking them to quit their normal therapies to go on the miracle cancer pill. We were probably, my husband and I were probably the only ones there who didn't get up when he asked the audience to stand up and hold hands and pray for the miracle pill to be released into the market. So it was a very sad situation, but at least I got a love life. <laughs> So what can we do about it? What can we actually do? A Pew Research Center tells us that here in the US, Americans are most likely to trust science museums, documentaries, and magazines to get the facts right. We didn't really ask this, this question in Brazil in none of our surveys, but I believe the same would apply to the rest of the world. And if people trust science museums and documentaries and magazines, Perhaps it's time that we started to partner with these organizations to promote skepticism and rational thinking. Let's partner with science museums and maybe get them to do exhibits that promote critical thinking and skepticism. Documentaries, maybe we can partner with filmmakers to produce documentaries about skepticism. And magazines, let's get more magazines that are talking about critical thinking and skepticism. In Brazil, my magazine, the one that we publish at the Institute, is the only magazine in Brazil that promotes critical thinking and skepticism. So maybe we should partner with journalists, with science journalists, but, but be careful there, because science journalists can be very tricky. Before you know, you end up getting married to one. <laughs> Without ever having any recollection of having said yes. <laughs> but we know that memory can be a tricky thing, and my husband has always been a fan of Elizabeth Lofton, so go figure what happened. <laughs> In my country, I have a bigger challenge than you. You've got a lot of science museums here. But when we asked Brazilians if they had visited science museums or science centers in the past year, only 6% of the respondents said yes. And those who said no said that they didn't go because it was either too expensive or too far away. 
So I have a bigger challenge. I have to build science museums in Brazil if I ever get my money back for science project. <laughs> and finally, we have to stand up for science, especially scientists. In, in all these years working with science communication, I realized that most of skeptic activism and science advocacy is made by non-scientists. In my country specifically, sci the scientific community has been very silent, and now all of a sudden we want the support of the population. But where was the scientific community? when people were dying of cancer because they quit their therapies to go on the miracle pill. Where is the scientific community now that homeopathy and acupuncture are recognized as regular medical practices in my country and they are being taught in our universities, including my own university, the University of Sao Paulo. So if we stay silent, we as scientists, if we stay silent when people are dying and then we go to the streets when our budget is cut, that's not a very good message to convey to the population. We're not going to get support from the population if we behave like that. So what we did in Brazil is that last year, my, my husband and I, together with two other partners, we launched the first institute in Brazil for the promotion of skepticism and rational thinking. And we did it. <laughs> we did it with a lot of support from CFI and Barry Carr and Ray Ho and Susan Gerbic and Stuart Weiss. So we had lots of help from you and thank you for that. And now uh, we have a magazine, the website's right there. We do have some articles in English, so if you go to our website, you, you, you will be able to read some of our articles. And we've had over 5 million views in our articles in the magazine, and we have over 20,000 followers in our social media. One thing else that we did, uh, talking about standing up for science and building a community of skeptics in Brazil, so we asked our followers to really stand up for science. And I don't know if you have this kind of thing in the US, but we have a tradition of family lunches in Brazil, Sunday lunches. Someone told me that you have, some, uh, you have Sunday dinners sometimes, so you get the family together for Sunday dinner or lunch. We do lunches in Brazil. And I asked my followers, we started a campaign, to be the family skeptic. So be the Sunday lunch skeptic. When your mother goes <coughs> on that detox diet, be the one to tell her that it's bullshit. <laughs> and it worked. So our followers began to do it, and, and this campaign, be the, the family skeptic, really worked. And to tell you how we care about our community, my institute has started providing community lunches for all of those of our followers who have been banned from their family. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.